God has an expectation. God has a plan to see his expectation met. But the generation must come in alignment. And we say yes to Jesus. Ibarasia Tabo, Mecca Baba, Kamande Kaidatos. We will hold nothing, Jesus. You want the generation, we offer you on. Let the waitings come to an end. Spiritual growth. I will need some little bit of volume on the microphone. I want to welcome every one of us to another question and answer session. I want to encourage the media team to please rearrange our questions in a way that it can flow. I woke up this morning and found out that um, somebody had hacked my Instagram account. And while we were trying to recover that, I found out that my Facebook page was gone. It had a new name. It had totally new IDs. So I want to celebrate the team that recovered it in less than 24 hours. So um, so who is the team leader self now? Lamdi, are you the team leader? Okay, that means the team leader. So, so, okay, so Lamdi, stand. That means, please stand. Oriomi gave them moral support, so stand. So at least we have a three a team of three on ground. Prince was also struggling from Lagos. Israel from Ibad. Daniel from Ushobu. And then Emmanuel from Australia. But um, Jesus prevailed. The, it looked as if the hacker was afraid of Jesus. Because by the time we recovered the account, many of my writers were gone. He only retained Jesus on the page so I just feel excited and I feel that I should commend it took quite a lot of hours yes at least together almost almost about 4 hours because you came in about 11 and we are just being done about maybe about 3 30 to 4 so we appreciate all of you I didn't know that we, that we were important so but Thank you so much. God bless you. Can we please celebrate it? <clears throat> Spiritual growth. Proverbs chapter 18 verse 1 and then we trust God that within the next 20 minutes we can move. But I feel led to give you a charge. The Bible says, true desire, a man having separated himself, seeketh and intermeddled with all wisdom. Can I have a more direct translation? No, no, no. This verse takes me too far away from where I'm going. I understand the concept of the verse because this verse gives us its true adaptation. Well, let me read. Because this is the sense of the verse. However, I want to adapt it into something else. He who willfully separates himself, it means it was desire that sponsored his separation, from God and man seeks his own desire and quarrels against all sound wisdom. So give me back to King James and then I'll run. Thank you. True desire, a man having separated himself and the sense with which this verse was communicated is that this man began to give accommodation to selfish ungodly desires what he begins to do in separation uh, to fulfill his desires is that he separates himself 
from any other communication that can cancel out his desire. It's like somebody says, I want to start smoking Indian hemp. I don't want to use a name. But there is a fellowship of a kind of men that you may be involved in that will not give room for smoking in their hemp. So to fulfill your desires, the first thing you will need to do is that you walk away from that group and then you now focus your heart on gaining mastery of the fulfillment of this desire so that in secret, if you draw smoke into your mouth, what's the first feedback most times? The person coughs. But you may go online to check how do you beat the reality of coughing when on the way to mastering how to, to smoke in their hem. How much should you smoke so that you can be still be sane? Because if you smoke too much, you can become prophetic. All of these labors in an ultimately engaging wisdom and separating himself were because he had a strong desire. In the similitude of this man is also the one who against popular opinion has found something to come into. I want to be wise. I want to be smart. I want to prevail. A sound that is contrary to the popular sound and for the purpose of this class I want to mature as a Christian. The norm right now is to manage where you are. At least you are saved. So just run your life. But there's somebody in this building who may be saying, I don't want to remain here. And every time you vocalize your desire, somebody may say, did God call you? Because we feel that growth spiritually is supposed to be tantamount or the desire to grow spiritually is supposed to be tantamount to labors to fulfill a divine call the bible says that man who wants to labor into this thing that he has found as a desire must first separate himself it means you will isolate yourself from every voice that says where you are is good enough are you with me Every voice that says you can't go beyond here. Every voice that says if you pray for five minutes every day, you are good. Every voice that says you cannot, you cannot do right. All of us are just managed. You isolate yourself from those voices. And then your isolation does not equal fulfillment you will begin to seek wisdom. And when you find it, the Bible gives us a protocol of engagement. It means that you will intermeddle. A more contemporary word is the word mingle. In mingling, the actual sense of that word is that what mingles with another thing ultimately becomes lost in that other thing. So that you are no longer, in chemistry we call them... Um, is it, is, it, is it the word miscible? What did Pastor Jelas told Maths. Management. Okay, 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 okay. I think there's a word like that, miscible. What does it mean? That it means you, you might likely need more than a physical process to separate them. Am I right? Good. So, when you mingle that way, what's happening there? is you are supposed to be miscible with wisdom so that it becomes a default you know what to do a default you know how to do it a default you know when to do it a default you know where to do it a default you know with whom to do it a default you know for whom to do it because you have become one with wisdom now, wisdom at that level, based on the, the Greek terminologies used to define wisdom, is called Sophia. Now, when you meet a man who is operating with this order of wisdom, he basically does not need to, you have become a slave of the Holy Ghost, and then he can turn your body whichever way he wants to turn it. 
It's one of the places where we are going. Jesus knew where to be, what to do, how to do. He showed us the example of how this protocol is, be, or is incepted that you must pray. But it was not everything that he prayed about. For example, when the news about Lazarus came, the Bible did not say Jesus went into consultation. He was under the influence of that spirit and instead of become, becoming agitated, he just flowed with his normal life. Knowing that it was not time for it to be solved. We will grow in Jesus' name. One of the signs that you are growing is that you are more dependent. When anxiety is, is still well, much expressed, it means that you have not trusted enough. Are you with me? So we, we have a lot of growth indicators and I hope that we get there if somebody asks that kind of question. But what I'm trying to say is that in achieving spiritual growth, a man must begin with desire. I want to be like Jesus. And that's our definition of spiritual growth. I want to conform to the stature of the Christ. And then you will begin to separate yourself from voices that suggest, from associations that suggest that it will not be possible. You separate yourself from unto. And then you begin to study the word of God. You begin to fellowship with the spirit until you become one with his instructions. One with his possibilities. Amen. Alright. Now, okay, I still have some time. When God in Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 made man in his image and his likeness, beyond the many reasons that God had in mind was the intention to be the only one, only visible entity in the earth space. If I decide to, like I'm wearing black, black now, she, this clothes is black. Okay. I can decide to, and people do it now, to say, on um, Sunday, I'm not saying it to, on Sunday, everyone should come in black. I may just want to, it may be, it may not be anything spiritual, it may just be something, maybe I just got a new black black and I want to show it off and then I feel, everybody come in black. You rarely see people tell people to come in white white when they don't have a new white shirt. Are you with me? So, leadership is strange. If it is, if it is run from self, you can make people do things just so that you will shine. You know, if we say everybody should come in white, Belumi, you understand that white is 10 colors. Am I right? There will be greenish, there will be bluish, there will be creamish. And then there will be, there will be speckled. It means some parts will be white, some parts will be, they call it dirty white. We hear there's off-white too now, right? God had a picture in mind and for that purpose by existence and by functionality he wanted to be the only one visible so he decided that man will be established in his own image and after his likeness so that if it moves it is God if it exists it is God are you with me? good that's what God had in mind but after the departure of man by the sin of the original man God did not give up on his intention to be the only one visible so what he did was to package the seed of the kingdom and plant it in man he decided to invest the seed of the kingdom knowing that with the investment of the seed of his kingdom the visibility that he desired will still be possible when you gave your life to Christ the spirit of the Christ was transmitted into a fellowship with your spirit the Holy Spirit did not become your spirit you still existed with a separate identity which is your human spirit 
to your human spirit is distinctly different from my own your human spirit has a wiring a wiring that was designed according to your ordination in God so your human spirit was designed to be alive to certain things maybe the same things but at varying degrees with my own based on the demand that will be placed on my human spirit are you with me your human spirit was designed with possibilities and there's a possibility that there is the event that i have the same possibilities in my human spirit with isaac but based on the demands of destiny which may be the same for example god can raise both of us to be prophets unto the nations it means that we will have most likely the same configuration but depending on the scope of the assignment we will be wired differently to be able to sense differently to be able to traffic differently to be able to speak with different weights every one of us has a distinct expression what happens when you become born again is that marriage happens and in that marital union the holy spirit comes to fellowship with your spirit somebody say with your with your like a man comes to fellowship with a woman and ultimately if they sustain interaction both of one of them well in human relationship both of them are supposed to begin to morph that's change gradually because of the abrasions that they experience don't sit like that and scatter your leg sit straight she said no me i like to scatter my leg after a while we will arrive at a middle region or that person arriving at a middle region may not please you but you will soon grow tired of talking about scattering your leg so you'll be more silent because of abrasion i mean there's a rub off together and the person too will not the radius of the wide leg will have narrowed are you with me so nobody really fulfills what they wanted but both of them have changed however in in the relationship between the christ and the church the expression is more is stronger the christ is supposed to to, to supply an unchanging dimension you are supposed to be the one changing and so the ministry of the holy spirit is to bring to you the demands of the christ and paint pictures how that demand will make you an a vessel rather that is more pleasing to the christ so he ties benefits not just a house or a car but that if you make this adjustment you will put a smile on the face of your lord and because you want to put a smile on his face what would you do you will adjust so that marital union is not designed to leave you the same it is in the outworkings of that marital union that god meets his end of visibility so the holy spirit is the seed of the kingdom of god that is planted into you and one of his many purposes is to ensure that when it moves even though the fall has happened it's still god when it exists it is still god if you don't understand raise your hand help me do you understand no do you have a roommate is the roommate here okay let's not do roommate the way sunshine and Belumi are sitting so are you comfortable are you comfortable is it possible you can soon wish to stretch your hand now Belumi carries uses a camera it means once in a while you will need to get off this seat and snap and come back to sit after a while sunshine may be tired of his standing and sitting because in a way it's going to be distract i know she say it won't distract is he going to distract after a while yes because she needs to adjust every time he wants to sit down after a while she can whisper but let me see if you stand up now don't come here again but because he needs to come Two things will happen after a while sunshine is going to become dead to his movements so that she can concentrate 
Balumitu will be more careful in sitting down so that and standing up so that he no longer distracts. Both of them are still living the lives that they want to live, but with adjustments. Are you with me? I'm saying that's how human relationships are. But in the relationship between the believer and the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost, maybe sunshine, is not designed to change. Because if the Holy Ghost alters his shape, he stops being the Holy Ghost. It means he can no longer meet the ends of God. Are you with me? In the human relationship, we have a will here, we have a will here. And the design is that he helps her fulfill her will and she also helps him fulfill the will. But in the relationship with the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost comes with a kingly will. And the Holy Ghost is not committed to helping you fulfill your will. His assignment is ruled out in the midst of thy enemies. Anything that opposes the will of the Christ as advertised by the Holy Spirit advertises that entity as an enemy of the Christ. So the Holy Spirit does not negotiate the will of the Christ. He enforces it but he does it softly. He advertises it. And then he's willing to wait until you have every good reason to align. Are you getting me? When you ultimately align your life will begin to advertise God because the purpose of that will is to give God visibility. That when you move, it's God people will see. When you talk, it's God people will see. Because man dropped out of that will, God now installed that will in a person and brought that person into a relationship with you when you got saved. Am I well understood now? So that's the design. So it's the seed of the kingdom. It's the spirit of the king. And he begins to relate with us. The communication of the will of God as by the Holy Spirit is supposed to produce God's perfect man and the name of God's perfect man is the Christ when we begin to measure the prosperity of the, that ministry of the Holy Spirit using your in mathematics we do what we call correlation and regression what you are trying to check is how close these two calls, these two equations in expression are. Are you with me? So every time the Holy Ghost labors, maybe for like six months inside you, you can go back to scriptures and then check the areas of his labor. Match them with the expressions of the Christ. It will tell you if you have looked more like Jesus or you have looked farther away from him. If you have looked more like Jesus because of that ministry of the Holy Spirit, then you have grown. If you have looked further away from him, what if what you find is a further deviation, it means that within that space you have not grown, you have regressed. Are you with me? Good. So every time the Holy Spirit begins to labor, and that labor only becomes possible because of that marital union that was activated in the day you said, you are my Lord and Savior. Take my spirit. Let him walk with you. Are you with me? Ha! Stop playing. If you don't understand me, raise your hand again. Okay, you understand. Amen. It should be simple. So join me. Just play a little bit lower. And I think that's what I want. So, the seed of the kingdom was sown to the degree or to the end that God's perfect man be produced. I know the Holy Spirit empowers you to do miracles. I know the Holy Spirit empowers you to speak in tongues. But the ministry of the Spirit is to produce Christ in everyone. Whatever you can do. Also, produce Christ not only in activity, but in character, in existence. That's the one called ministry of the Holy Spirit. In Philippians chapter 2 verse 13, the Bible says that in verse 12, he says that each one of us should work out our salvation 
with fear and with trembling. You are not supposed to walk in your salvation because you were saved by grace. Walking out your salvation means labor so that there will be proof that you are saved. Make visible your saved status. And it must be carried out with fear and trembling. If you match those two words together, you will produce the, the expression called reverence. Because it is because the one that you are laboring with is a king spirit. So when he comes and says, behave like this, he will say, okay sir. And that's the only way your salvation can be worked out. If not, you will keep manifesting like someone who is not saved. The reason why your salvation can be worked out is that God is at work in you. There is a seed of divine expectation that has been planted in you. And that seed is also at work. It's producing two things. It's producing desire and it's producing capacity. It's at work in you both to will and to do of God's pleasure. Are you getting me now? That's how Christ is ultimately formed. And as Christ is progressively being formed, we say that this man is spiritual growing. Amen. Why do we need to grow? It's because the design of for the existence of everyone who has come into the fellowship of any spirit is to grow into the nature of that spirit. That's the design. When a man begins to follow Shango, he is as strong in the things of Shango as he is one in nature, in character with Shango. The little I've seen about Shango, Shango is the god of um, is it fire and thunder. Good. It means that if you are Shango, will not understand the concept of forgiveness too well. It means anything you do. He strikes you. And because Shango wants visibility, the Shango man must align, he must have very short temper. You know what very short temper means? It means at the slightest provocation, he must explode so that Shango can have visibility. If that person begins to live a life of forgiveness, Shango will soon start a fight with him. Because forgiveness will not give the opportunity to occasion thunder. Are you with me? So, when the two sons of, um, there's, there's, what was that name they called them? No, there's two sons of, um, of, um, Buanajis. When they, that, that's the sons of thunder. When they passed through Samaria and the people didn't, didn't accord them the, the reverence they felt. Ah, they were not good to us. Say, shall we call thunder to, to fall upon them? Jesus said, ye do not know what sort of spirit ye are of. It means your spirit is forgiven. Your spirit overlooks insult and continues to do what it's supposed to do. Your spirit, the spirit that you are of, chooses his fights carefully. If it was Shango, they were worshipping. Jesus would not have needed to say that. To forgive, Jesus would still have said, ye do not know that the spirit that ye are of always strikes so strike so that's the design it means then that if we are at war spiritually the way spirit, what the labor of every spirit is to gift their nature visibility in the earth god wants to be seen our adversary also wants to be seen if those who are in darkness are maturing into the adversary and those in light are stunted. They are contented. They do not because of desire separate themselves to intermeddle with the kind of wisdom that gives them growth in Christ. It means after a while, the predominant expression in the territory will be darkness and not light. So we must grow. I was in a meeting. I think the first time I shared it that way was in Enugu and I said to them do you know what a three year old witch can do when she comes into a family that is financially buoyant and she does not like the family do you know that that family can begin become poor in one month 
one shop we born, something will happen. It means that if you want to match that child, what you should normally do is look for another child who is three years old who has been going to to children's church. And you pitch them together. What will you likely find out? In 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 nine out of ten is too modest. In 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 ninety five out of hundred. And some people may still say we are still wrong. In ninety five out of hundred cases, you find out that a three year old in light cannot reverse that atrocity. You may be shocked. That in 70 out of 100, a 50 year old in church cannot reverse that. It means our we celebrate our growth physically more. We, we does not need intelligence. You don't need to be rich to be to grow. You don't even need to go to school to grow. Just ensure that if death comes calling, you evade it. You'll be growing naturally. Are you with me? Even if you are starving, you'll be growing. You may not grow like you are supposed to be growing, but you will grow. Your stomach may not come out. But your beauty over time will fade. Your hair will change color. And after a while, you will be tired of dying it. Because you are alive. Knowing that we have been called to contend for Jesus said upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. It means that the believer must understand that spiritual growth does the kingdom a favor. And in case you are not called into core ministry or in case you don't think that you are bold enough to do anything out of the box for Jesus please grow. Can you whisper to your neighbor, grow? Because your growth is will still put the advancement of the kingdom in a posture of advantage. That you are growing. It means God can do more with you. That's what it means. I'll close with two scriptures. A friend of mine in Oweri, and he's a good pastor, I was ministering Two years ago, thereabout, at the Imo State University, that's Imsu. And when I looked into the congregation, I beheld this fine young man. He's a, he's a beautiful young man. That's the way it is. It means when you arrange fine people, all the fine people will call him fine. So I, beyond this beauty, I knew there was something about me. That God desired to replicate in him. So, I, I was casually dressed that day. Just jean and white, white shirt. I said, you come. And I began to pray. And I began to ask the Lord to pour out himself on him. It happens many times I go for meetings. There's somebody in that territory that comes into some of the things I found. And so I began to relate. So now he's pastoring the church and he's doing well. And he said, every believer qualifies to do ministry. Now, I, 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 when I read things online, I critically listen. He's qualified to do ministry. So I said, okay. But I wrote under it. So, ev so, every believer needs to be perfected to do ministry. And I left it there. So he now said, Daddy, after a while, Daddy, what? Uh, if you, you know, some of them feel excited that oh you are even reading my status uh, this thing you wrote uh, am I wrong you are not wrong but that statement needs to be fulfilled because every believer is qualified to do ministry at a level at a level if you got saved today you can preach the gospel even this night I believe you but the gospel through which you are saved is called the gospel of grace. And what saved you is half of that gospel which is referred to as the gospel of salvation. Are you with me? There are many other gospels that you need to know before your perspective about this kingdom is rounded. As a matter of fact, if it was not that you have been coming to church all your life, if you just got, they just blocked you on the road and you got saved like that, 
You don't know the kingdom. You have the kingdom in you, but you don't know it. I found out this morning that even though I've been using Facebook since uh, I was in the university, I don't know Facebook. Because I encountered a problem that ha! at a point I was making seriously. So what? Well, come on, Mula. Let's even crash the page. They, they said we can't crash it. Ah. And I became afraid. Let them not be siphoning money from people. It's, times are very hard everywhere now. Uh, but but what, what, what do we do? And then those who knew what to do say, let's do this thing, let's do this thing. At a point, I said, lamb, lamb, de, lamb de. Oh, There was a time that Oriomi was even hanging over me. I said, Oriomi, air, air. I, I want to breathe. Sorry. I promise Jesus I will say sorry to you. Because I saw that Oriomi stood up and went to sit far away. <laughs> so he, he didn't tell me he was offended, but he felt bad. Abi, it was because I was choking. But then, forgive me. Mm. I, I really felt bad. I felt bad. And the, the Lord stayed there. That, that young man is offended. It's offended. So, I'm sorry. Can we help me say I'm sorry? Sorry. Sorry. All right. So, he has the kingdom. But he does not know the kingdom enough to be able to bring a holistic um communication of the kingdom so he has to continue knowing it and with the more that he knows the more competent he becomes to be able to steward the realities of that kingdom he has believed so the signs of believing attach to him instantly but there are more things to do in the kingdom and so I took him from Romans chapter 10 and then we went to Mark chapter 16. Or we went to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Showing that yes, he's a new creature. And so there are realities he can steward. And then took him to Mark chapter 16. Which are the signs of believing. And then took him to Ephesians chapter 4. To show that there is a ministry. As brought forth by the fivefold. Which is supposed to perfect. To mature the saints. So that they can do the work of the ministry. Understand. Those are some of the things I do online. I look for trouble and then I begin to teach. You need to grow. You need to grow. Two verses of scripture that help to buttress this um, proposal. Psalms chapter 92, verse 12. The Bible says. The righteous. How many righteous people are here? How many righteous people are here? The foundation for righteousness is what Christ has done. So that's the first layer. So how many righteous people are here? If you are not raising your hand, it means that at basic principles, you have not believed what Jesus done. How many righteous people are here? Some people are still not raising their hand. When I give a call like that, please, please. You, we should be obeyed, obedient in church. And I mean the obedient O B E R E E D I. How many righteous people are in this building? Raise your hand. They are, they are expressions of subtle rebellion. Let me not go there. But if we ask those who are not raising their hands, why are you not raising their hands? What do you think they will say? See, they don't just feel like it's rebellion at a level. How many righteous people are in church today? Raise your hand, raise your hand. Let's see you. Good. The Bible says that one of your destinies is that you will flourish, you shall flourish like the palm tree. Your flourishing like the palm tree has to do, one, with the ability of the palm tree to survive in adverse conditions, two, with the ability of the palm tree to be productive in every department. Because there is no aspect of the tree called the palm tree that is waste. Amen. Good. What other thing did the Bible say in Psalm 92 verse 12 about the righteous? 
is that he shall grow like the cedar of Lebanon. Now the cedar, the tree called the cedar in Lebanon is a tall tree. So it means that you will grow tall. Two, it is a very straight tree. So it's often used in ancient time construction. It's a straight tree. It means that your path will not be crooked. And in the absence of crookedness, you will attain to your greatest heights. That's the design of the life of the one who is what? Who is righteous. So if you raise your hand, or you did not even raise it, may God help you. You are supposed to flourish. All department prosperous. Season of adversity, advancement, and in straightness, you will soar. You get to the greatest heights. That's the destiny. So you have growth. That's what I was I'm trying to point out. Because you are righteous, you have growth captured into your divine expressions. Amen. Second verse of scripture. We want to go to Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 15. In those days, and at that time, I will cause the branch of righteousness to grow up into David or grow up unto David. Now, this was a prophetic delivery about the person of the Christ, it's not your direct prophecy. This became your prophecy because your life is designed to be expressed within the context of the life of Christ. I, at that time, will I cause the branch of righteousness to grow up unto David. When David is mentioned, kingship is what God is advertising. And you will see the following verses that the realities have to do with a king that has come to full stature. And he shall execute judgment and righteousness in the land. What does that mean? It means the man who is supposed to attain unto this kind of growth in the similitude of the Christ is designed to execute judgment and righteousness in the land. If you refuse to grow and you do not mature into your throne, there are forms of wickedness. There are forms of... Um, there, are kind, there are different kinds of atrocities that you can only watch. Your greatest reaction will be to sigh. Ha! These people shall, but you will not be able to do anything about it. If we don't grow, we can be many. But our, it must change now. We not walk. You know why? Because we are babies. We are trying to function beyond our pay grade. I still got messages like that today and I have prayed for every one of them and I'm still praying now that the Lord will bring help to all of those families in the name of Jesus. But somebody comes and says there's trouble in my family, sir. Pray for us. And so I ask them I'm going to pray. That's how I initiate the discussion. But have you been praying? What have you been praying? What has God been saying to you? Then we know the person forces. God is not saying anything. Yeah. If I pray more, I can hear some things that God has said. Did, did, did God say this thing to you? Ah, eh, I had a dream like that. So it means God has spoken once, even twice, but man perceived it not. It means man cannot discern that this is the voice of God. It is not because hearing is non existent, it is because discerning capacity. Is also proof of growth. Are you with me? You can preach to your neighbor. Don't whisper to them. Preach to them. Like a like preacher Joel. And say to them, grow. What did the person say? He's just looking. Say to your neighbor, you must grow. I want to stop here. I have four other verses of scripture, but 
It's supposed to be a question and answer session. We must grow. We must grow. We want to pray for two minutes and we want to say to the Lord, I choose to grow. Help me to grow. True desire. Give me my verse of scripture. True desire. That's how it begins. A man having separated himself, seeketh an intermediate with all wisdom. I desire to grow. I desire to grow. I desire to grow. I am righteous. I am righteous. Therefore I flourish. I am righteous. Therefore I grow. There is a throne that God has offered me in Christ. And like the Christ, I mature into that throne. To the end that judgment and righteousness is established in the land, I grow. Le papo sato membra hande kuba bate kembembe ka baba baba komba miantakwa randa baba kubate. I grow, I grow, I grow, I grow. Let your grace impart the capacity to separate myself, separate or turn onto prayers. Separated unto the word, I grow, I grow, I grow. There is a demand for maturing upon the life of every believer. There is a demand for maturing upon every congregation. The church in every city is designed to mature, and the gifts of the Christ are designed to labor to this end. I grow. Mama, mama, kaba. Sandian badala kata baba bahatada. Beta de kate ma bodia kambrando kasula bata. Bete te ma mamonta bahate. Bate ta kapa baba toke ande. Brasa tamo. Branca tata bentalianda. Bosa tabum bebilasa. Ata babonda. Bata taka babe bakianda bakata. Imbale kapa batianda momantata. Rata kabiska baha. Rete kaskanda babenta biakataba. I will not remain like this. I will not remain like this. As I continue to behold by the workings of the Spirit, I begin to conform. Sai kombe da da baba bate. Lekete me moka teble de tulia. Ai ba to me mase. Sekande granda kabo. Riata kasta. Riata kaba baba baka stata. Indanka babenta lia baba. Rekete te baba bantaya. Atambia sata ba. Le papanta mena kombi ambatata. Let everything that inhibits my growth be inhibited. Inhibited. Di baba sai biate. I grow. I grow. I do not remain here. I do more for the kingdom because I become more in the kingdom. Oh, katemenda katade simba dada kapatai lete bebonda kambranda tokato esoda mihanda bakande estaba babete tatai leble totande abranta dida Ali amate monta la baba basaita afeta bamina tande efeta bakakata rata basibanta isaibati babata e kwata baboria rakata babitan sante i grow we give you praise and glory for by the many helps of your spirit we mature into that which you died for us to come into. Blessed be your holy name. I hear your voice. I follow your spirit. You are my master. You are my Lord. 
Yes, I hear your voice. I hear your voice. You are my master. More times I hear your voice, Lord. This voice follows your spirit. You are, you are my master. And you are, you are my Lord. One more time I hear your voice, Lord. And I follow your spirit. hear your voice and we follow your spirit we follow your spirit we follow your spirit Thank you, Father, for, for we are greatly helped. We are greatly helped. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. All right, so we can progress by way of um, a quick revision. Just the definition. So that somebody will not ask us again, what is spiritual growth? Anybody? What was my definition for last week? What is spiritual growth? Ah. I say how much? Uh -uh. I, I gave a textbook definition. I want to hear it the way I gave it. Okay, nobody wrote it down. Yes, Pastor Isaac. No, my own definition. How many people were here last week? What was my definition for spiritual growth? It means, ah, uh, okay. Yes, I begin. Give her the microphone. Progressive conformity to the image of the Christ as a result of progressive fellowship with the Christ. So there are two progressions. What you start with is progressive fellowship with the spirit of the Christ. If you fellowship with Shango's spirit, you will not grow into the Christ. Are you with me? So your source spirit is important. And when you find the right source spirit, you progressively fellowship so that you can progressively conform. So your rate of conformity is equal to your rate of progressions in fellowship. If you take only one step with in fellowship, you will only become one step of the Christ. So the steps with the Spirit have been apportioned different or increasing layers of conformity. If you want to take one step in 10 years, it means in 10 years you will only look like Christ by one step. So, uh, this one does not involve tears. Why am I not growing? Why am I not growing? How many steps have you taken with the Spirit? Are you with me? Good. So, it is progress, spiritual growth. And our context is the Christ. Is progressive conformity to the stature, if you want, to the image of the Christ, or in general terms, progressive conformity to the Christ as a result of progressive fellowship with the spirit of the Christ. Please write it down. Please write it down. Some of you in your 
places will be called to teach on spiritual growth. And you don't need to be looking for another definition if somebody has done the work for you. It might take you 30 minutes to get it done. Now, you just lift it from a book or lift it from your life. Should we do another thing? Because we don't have definition. So it means that maybe we just... No, last week was not good, Abby. What's, what topic is on your mind? What do you, if you had the privilege to make me preach on anything, what would you have loved me to preach on? Uh, the spiritual growth you want. Or maybe you don't want to be sincere. What, what, what do you want? What would you have loved me to preach on? Be sincere. Oyana. How to win. Somebody's raising the hand behind them. Who is, who is that? Stand, stand, stand. Okay, it's praise. Your hand went up. What would you have loved me to preach on? Or you have a Bible verse you don't understand. You want us to do that one instead. I want our heart to be in this thing. There's an end. And that's why I took us to Jeremiah. To show that there is a dimension of justice. Judgment and righteousness you cannot bring. If you have not matured like the Christ unto throne existence. And it doesn't happen the day you are born. Anybody tells you it happens the day you are born. is a liar. Because even Jesus was a child that was born. He didn't offer a child. God did not offer a child. What did the Bible say? Unto us a child. And unto us a son. The word son in Hebrew expression. Is not a male child. It's a child who has matured. To be able to take the place of the father. One who is ready to manage the estate or the heritage of the home. That's what they call a son. It's a Greek word heals from. That's where we drew our English word hair. That's what a son is. And Jesus signed off as a son too many times. Why are you asking me, show us the father? If you have seen me, you have seen the father. It means I've matured into the full DNA of the father. John also testified. He said, and we beheld his glory. Glory as of the only begotten. Full of grace and truth. The writer of Hebrews said, God has stopped speaking to the prophets. He has finally gotten the product that he wants. And that product is his speech in these days. God wants to make a statement with your life. And when you emerge, there are certain voices that will become unnecessary. Because you will not only be a speaking expression of God, you will be a living expression. That's why you must grow. So, get that definition. Every time you want to run away from the Holy Spirit, remember, if you stay away, wickedness will continue. Your desire for righteousness in the territory will never be fulfilled. Because you have not ascended the throne. Even David, after I was anointed, where did he go to? The throne. Because the anointing does not stop, does not drop, does not make you drop out of school. That's one of the banes of our current generation. Every time you meet a great man of God and he says something to you, you think it's time to go and start something. No. It's often time to go and do what you were doing before better. Are you with me? Uh, so that you can take the anointing back. So that when you show up, you will have a CV. And the CV will not be, I let the sheep to go and eat and I brought them back. Because every fool does that. After a while, the sheep know their way home. Are you with me? Uh, drive your goats out and then walk away in the night. Don't they come back? Do they go to sleep in another person's house? They know their way home. Even chickens. As dumb as you think they are, they come back home. But he, he went back with the oil. And then when he met Saul, he had a CV. See, oh God, I don't need these things. This God was already with me. It was not presence, it was anointing that a bear came and took one of the lamps and I went after it. When you get home on Google, check what a bear looks like. You don't fight it. The bear is a natural wrestler and it is heavy. So if it falls on a human being, that's the end of the fight. A bears, mature bears are not like this. They are big. They are, they, are, they are giants. And they crawl on fours. 
but they can also stand on two. So if you can tackle a bear like this, are you with me? So when a bear picks a lamb, you should not be too concerned normally because a lamb that he picked, you know the mother can give back to another one. David was like, the last time I called home, three lambs was what I told my father had been added to the fold. I won't call back home to say one died. I'll go after it. And he said, I delivered the lamp from his hand. It means he wrestled to a point that the bear had no peace to kill the lamp. It was a wounded lamp he got back. It was still breathing. Do you think it was human instinct that was working? There was a deliverance anointing that had been activated. And, and he, he, he pushed him to use it for whatever he was working with. Are you with me? So, that's, that's the thing in scripture. That, that you're anointed doesn't make you drop out of growth. Some people stop growing. In the day they had a dream that a great man of God, that Papa Mori Serulo came in their dream and said, Now you are a prophet to the nations. If you call him Shola in the morning, he will start a fight. I was anointed in my dreams by Maurice Serulu. How dare you call me Shola? We will grow. Can we have the questions? I, I saw one the other time. God has an expectation. God has a plan to see his expectation met. But the generation must come in alignment. And we say yes to Jesus. Ibarasia Tabo, Meka Baba, Kamande Kaidatos. We will hold nothing, Jesus. You want the generation, we offer you one. Let the waitings come to an end. 